In this video, we'll be discussing properties, trying to understand the syntax for a property, and writing our own properties. We've already seen properties created when we hooked up our view objects to our header file. So this should be a hint that we need to go to our header file right now. So let's go ahead and navigate to bfdog.h. The first question we want to answer is what are properties? And properties are simply attributes of an object. For example, for our dog objects, we will have a name, a breed, an age as factors that make them unique. What is interesting is that properties can be objects or primitives in their own right. We'll talk more about the difference between objects and primitives later, but for now, primitives that we've learned have been int, float, and bool. Every other type that we've talked about has started with a capital letter and has been a class that makes objects. Examples have included nstring, UI label, and UI button. We saw an example of these when we hooked up our IB outlets between our views and our header files in the Code Coalition mini tutorials. So what attributes or properties can be used to describe a dog? Well, let's start with its age. To keep this simple, let's make our dog's age an integer. A dog's age can be partway through the year, but we'll assume people entering in the age of our dog can round. Let's declare our property. So in between the at interface and the at end is where we're going to write our property. So I'm going to add a few return spaces. And I'm going to write at property, non-atomic in parentheses, int age, followed by a semicolon. To create a property, first we will use the keyword at property to tell our header file and our computer that we're going to be adding a property to this class. Next, we use the option non-atomic, and we're going to talk more about that in a second. But we can add multiple options for our property inside of these parentheses, as long as we separate them by commas. Finally, we have to give our property a type and a variable name so that anytime we create properties or set these properties we have to give it a value that's a type integer and we're going to be able to access that property using the variable name age. We've seen examples of this when we've taken a look at the text field and labels where we've been able to set the text property or get the text property when do we do this? Well, for the text field, we got the text property for our text field when we were able to access it and figure out what the user had entered in the text field. We were also able to set the value of our text property when we updated the labels text property and changed the information on our screen. In our case, we can set the age property using the dot syntax, so dot age, to a new value by simply creating an instance of dog, which we're going to show you how to do later and setting it equal to an integer, for example, 2, 4, or 20, just off the top of my head. I noticed a question in the forums talking about non-atomic. We will certainly dive into this later, but for now you should just always write it when you create properties. It has to do with thread safety and locking code, concepts that we'll be covering later. For now, it's important to include this option because it will make our computer program run faster. The breed of our dog is also important in terms of defining what our dog should be. So let's add that next. This name will be represented as a word or phrase, so we'll use our usual at quote quote when we set its value later. Each time we're writing at quote quote, we're using a special notation to create a string, which is actually another object of type NS string. So let's go ahead and add this property, and we're going to write at property, and we're going to write non-atomic, and we can add options that we talked about inside of these parentheses. So we're going to add the option strong as well. And we're going to add the class name and a, uh, and a string. And I'm going to add this little care star or asterisk. And I'm going to write breed. And finally, I'm going to finish this statement with a semicolon. What other attributes does a dog have? Well, an image of a dog is a great way to represent the dog. So let's add that. So we're going to write at property strong non-atomic and I'm going to write UI image and we're going to write care star again image followed by a semicolon. UI image is a class that is designed by Apple that represents an image object. An string is used to represent a collection of characters 
Well, UI image is used to represent a collection of pixels or image data. So let's review the format for properties created for objects. In our case, we only have two properties that are objects out of the three properties we've declared. Our bottom two lines of code are both objects, and this is an object of type and a string, and this is a type of UI image. Our integer is a primitive, so it is not an object. So the format is as follows. We write the keyword at property. We have to give it options, so we're going to give it options of strong and non-atomic separated by a comma. Next, we give it a class type. And finally, we're going to give it an asterisk, which we say is a pointer, and we'll talk about that in just a second, and a variable name followed by a semicolon. Note that the order of non-atomic and strong does not matter, which we have highlighted by writing them both ways. Notice the two differences between our int property and our n string and UI image property. We did not use strong and we did not use a care star in our primitive. So here we did not write strong and we did not add a care star before age. The asterisk indicates that we're dealing with objects or more accurately pointers to objects, which indicates that primitives and objects are stored differently in memory, which will be discussed later. The keyword strong also deals with how long objects are kept in memory. I promise the suspense will make it better. We've thrown a lot at you in this video, but we're getting there. In order to keep this moving and keep progressing and learning Objective-C and iOS, we're just going to start with these details and understanding properties.